Here is another video that is going to be another attempt of mine to make the process of building stairs a little easier. And I think that this right here just might make the biggest difference for those of you who are trying to build a set of stairs with a landing. Now also don't forget to check out our book and our book packages on how to build stairs with landings. And of course, the um, book package deal definitely recommend the getting the double book package with the laying out the stringers. Um, definitely, uh, definitely going to help. It'll explain how all of the stringers are connected. What's going to be the best way to connect, make the connection for the type of design that you are going to be working with. So let's go ahead and get started here. Take a quick tour around here. The upper stairs is located over here on our floor plan. Lower stairs over here. Here's the landing. Another view of it there. And the, what, the reason that this is going to be helpful for people who are having a difficult time, and I hate to say this, I have seen a lot of people who um, build stairs and they know what they're doing got a pretty good idea and they still would be better off if they actually snapped all of these lines or drew these lines on top of the building foundation or the floor sheathing I cannot tell you because you can use these lines as reference points to double check everything while you're building so that is the key to this video putting a floor plan type um, diagram on the floor where the stairs are going to be located and hopefully by the time you're done watching the video it will all make sense to you so top of the um, or top view of the stairway upper stringers upper steps and this would be the upper section over here now the floor plan if you're working with an architect or a building designer it's going to have an arrow showing which direction that the stair travel is going to be so it might have an arrow and it'll say up on the lower floor plan and then it'll have an arrow pointing down on the upper floor plan to give you a um, idea where the stairs are and how they are functioning on that particular plan now let's take a look at what it would look like with the floor plan drawing underneath the stairs we can see where the front of the stair riser here lines up perfectly with the line here Go around we have the landing here so all of these lines are going to line up here very important now for those of you who just aren't quite grasping the idea why in the heck i well, this floor plan is so important let me see if this makes sense i'm going to go ahead and draw some boxes in here the boxes will represent the step this is the top of the step here the other side is going to be the front of the riser now remember that the front of the riser is going to be the face of the riser. This might not represent the face of the stringer or the notch you're going to cut in the stringer. This is going to represent the front edge of the plywood or whatever you're going whatever materials you're going to use to create the front of your riser. So here we have the front of our riser and the top of our tread and it needs to fit within this box in our layout now let's go ahead and throw another box in there we can see here again front of the riser top of the tread and this of course is the third step up so each the measurement when you are done when the stairway is completed top of the tread is going to be here front of the riser face of the riser is going to represent this area if you need to if you're going to use half inch plywood then on the stringer before you put the plywood on you're going to be able to double check these measurements get a level come up and see if you have if the stair stringer is a half inch back for a half inch riser if you're going to use a three quarter inch riser the stair stringer will need to be three quarters of an inch back so that when you nail the three quarter inch thick riser onto the stair stringer the front of the 
plywood, front of the OSB, front of the riser, face of the riser is going to be line up with these lines. And of course, this is what it would look like if you had the stringers, front of the stringer lining up with these lines. You're going to nail your three quarter inch thick plywood on top and it's going to be sticking past. So again, this isn't difficult to do before you nail the stringer into place permanently. Set the stringer in place, um, attach it with some screws maybe, and then grab a level and double check everything and see what position. Make sure that all of these lines line up. And you might even um, benefit from if the stair stringer was cut incorrectly. You'd be able to see it right here in, in the lines that you have. So if you snap 10 inch lines apart on the ground and you for some reason laid out your stair steps at 10 and a quarter inches, you're going to see it right here. But that isn't going to be the case, is it? Because you now have a valuable tool here to figure out exactly where to position everything correctly, right? So we're not going to end up with uh, that problem. Now I did move this landing back a little bit. Let's go back. I moved it back two inches, you could see here. This is something, again, you're going to have to adjust if you have a overhang for your stair treads. If you have an undercut for your risers or your steps, you're going to have to set this back um, an inch and three quarters, maybe um, two inches to get everything to work out. So keep this in mind also for your landing. Just don't build it at three foot. That's one of the worst things you could do. You know, come in and uh, hey, you know what? My landing's got to be three foot. Well, it can be three foot as long as you have square risers, as long as you don't have any overhangs for the treads, any stair nosings, no nosings, no undercuts. Um, yes, then you can have it uh, build it at three foot. If not, then you're going to have to adjust and compensate for every single piece of material in your stairway to get it to uh, turn out right.